I think this one's called, ah, babies are attacking me. Probably not, but yeah, it should be. Good morning. It's day five on the Disney Dream. It's about 7.20 a.m. We've been up since 6, 6.30. And it's about 12 degrees Celsius outside. But we are currently sailing through the fjord on our way to Oslo. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's like um, maybe a top 100 core memory moment. This sailing in and seeing all the scenery and the houses, and it's been absolutely beautiful. I'm sure the video is not even do it justice because it's just absolutely just so gorgeous. Like it's. I don't know, <laughs> it's hard to put in words what kind of experience it is, but um, yeah, so we're on our way to Oslo, we should be there, I imagine the next hour or so, the all aboard time is, sorry, the all, all shore time is 9am, and uh, it's a quick turnaround, we're, we're only there till 3pm, but uh, anyway, we don't have any excursions planned, so we'll just see what there is to see, I guess. Uh, we haven't made any plans for anything to do, so we'll do the hop on, hop on, hop off bus. Maybe we'll just wander around. We'll, we'll see. We'll find something fun to do, though. But yeah, for now, we're just really enjoying these views as we're sailing through the fjord. It's just if you get a chance to do this, do it. It is it is a, a, an amazing experience. people to wake up. At the cruise port, we purchased tickets for the city sightseeing bus. These were around $45 per person. So we got a hop on hop off bus from the port, the cruise port. We took the city sightseeing, the Stroma brand one. Gotta say, I'm not super impressed so far. It's taken us forever to get halfway around the city. The bus is super hot. The headphones don't work very well. You can't hear the audio. So yeah, in hindsight, maybe a cab would have been a better choice. But uh, yeah, that's what we do. We try things out. <laughs> But we're at the Vliegland, Vliegland Park, the big sculpture park uh, that's, that's famous in Oslo, so we're gonna go check that out now. This sculpture park, part of the larger Frogner Park, is Gustav Vigeland's life work. It is composed of over 200 sculptures in granite, bronze, and wrought iron. It's actually the world's largest sculpture park by a single artist. The artwork is meant to symbolize every aspect of human life. The figures are also depicted naked in order to remain timeless. It is free to visit.
Yes, this is a really interesting park. Um, all the statues are done by this artist Gustav Leland. There's more than 200 of them. The one behind me up there is the Wheel of Life. The big uh, monolith in the center is called the Monolith. And the one in the front that everybody was photographing earlier is called the Angry Boy. The little gold hand. But yeah, this place is it's wild. And more the way it's worn, because there are children everywhere running around like little monsters. <laughs> climbing on things and everything, so uh, yeah, be prepared for that if you come, but yeah, quite an interesting park. The sculptures are very thought-provoking, I think. Everything's naked, everybody's naked in different positions, so not really sure what it all means, but cool, cool regardless. The Norska Folk Museum is an open-air museum that contains 160 buildings from rural and urban Norway from the Middle Ages through the 20th century. Admission was around $13. Towards the front of the museum, you'll find a building with several indoor exhibitions. These exhibits include art and artifacts, such as clothing, household goods, and furniture. This is how they depicted America, wild and unrefined, like a naked lady riding an armadillo. You can read stories about the history of Norway and its journey towards the modern ages, including the effects of religious reformation. The top floor showcases a collection of wooden chests. For centuries, a chest was the most important piece of furniture in a home. It was indispensable for traveling, for weddings, as a status symbol, and for the storage of valuable objects. They come in many shapes and sizes and were used for a variety of purposes. Outside, you'll find all types of buildings. In the countryside portion of the museum, you'll find homes, community, and farm buildings from rural areas. In the Old Town area, there are more urban structures from Oslo and its suburbs. You're there. This is the Stave Church from Chol, dating from around the year 1200. It was relocated to Oslo and re-erected in 1884 by King Oscar II. It's one of the most impressive buildings in the entire museum. So here there were no benches 
in the Catholic time. So the people would have to stand up, and uh, the men, no, sorry, the women, would stand in the north. So that's the north side, and you know, probably know that the church is always paced like west entrance, west, east, north. Uh, south, and it's the reason for that. Uh, I won't go, go into that. But the women would be staying over there, and the men over there, and north is more kind of the evil side. <laughs> I'm sorry, so I didn't make up these books. <laughs> and the men on the south side, and the men, uh, that's warm, you know, warm and nice. The north is cold and dark. And also, the south is close to that fire exit And that was because the men were more important. So our second and last stop of the day is the Norsk Folksmuseum, which is an outdoor open air museum. They have a lot of different buildings from different eras of Norway's history that have been relocated here. It's really cool. Some of them you can walk into, some of them you can look into. Um, I don't know, it's just, it's really fun. There's a lot of stories posted on different billboards around where you can see about the different buildings and what happened there, different bits of history. There's a really cool old uh, Stav, Stavskirk, uh, Staves Church, on top of the hill that you can go visit. Guy inside telling stories. So, yeah, this is a really neat museum. It's like, unlike uh, the ones I've been to before, I think. And you can see there's some modern buildings and stuff here too. Yeah, so, uh, we didn't have a lot of time today in Oslo to see things, but I'm pretty satisfied with what we got to see, so. Yeah, definitely, if you find yourself in Oslo, check this place out. It's like really reasonably priced, and there's so much history and interesting things to see here. All right, we're gonna head back to the Hop On Hop Off bus now, and head back to the ship, because uh, one, I'm hungry, we need some lunch, and two, we don't have a lot of time, and we wanna make sure we're back in plenty of time. So we'll see you back on the ship. Just outside the ship, they have a gift shop set up that sells a collection of Norwegian gifts and trinkets. They sold everything from hats and t-shirts to Norwegian sweaters and kitschy troll figurines. I'll let you take a guess at what Tori bought. He's a little crabby. So we didn't get a chance to wrap up last night after our, our day back on the ship. Uh, after we got back from Oslo, we got back on board and so did everybody else. The ship was, it felt very crowded for the first time, I think. Um, almost like a, a sea day. So we tried to go to the rainforest room. Uh, it was super crowded. We tried to find a hot tub on deck. It was also super crowded. So uh, we just kind of chilled out for a while. I got in the pool for a little bit, but it was, wasn't terribly, it was a little warm, but it wasn't warm enough, so. Uh, we got changed and we went downstairs to the atrium. They had a bunch of characters out. So I got Donald in his Italian opera outfit. I'll post, I'll share that here. Um, very cute, I love Donald, he's my favorite. And so seeing him in different costumes is, is awesome. Uh, after that, we had dinner uh, at a chain and guarded again. Unfortunately, last night the food just didn't didn't do it for us. We had a, it just wasn't a 
It wasn't a great meal. We loved our table mates and it was good to see them and we had a good time chatting with them but the food was just not, wasn't, wasn't it for us last night. Um, there was no regular theater show. They had a magician last night so we skipped that. Uh, mostly, we were just so tired because we got up so early to go to see the see the fjords, uh, start coming through the fjords. So, um, yeah, early night, late in bed, watching TV, got to sleep early. Uh, so it's now day five on the uh, Disney Dream, and we are currently sailing into the fjords. Uh, it's the first of Anger. We should arrive uh, into the fjords in the next hour or so, or into into in this. Merkivik Mer is the port name. So unfortunately we're not actually docking right into Stavanger. We're at the industrial port like half an hour away. But uh, yeah, looking forward to that. We have an excursion booked at 1.30. We're doing the Lysford cruise. Very excited for that. And because of a shortage in buses in Stavanger, we don't actually have to bus into Stavanger. They're gonna bring the boat to us. We'll just board the cruise right near where we're docking with the Dream here. Um, so this morning, yeah, we had a lovely little time at, at Cove this morning, got some coffee, and now we're waiting on a, I forget what it's called, it's a, uh, it's a tour of the, of the dream, essentially. I think it's like focused on the art and stuff, but I'm not really sure what to expect, but really looking forward to it. Um, and some of you might notice that, that Danny isn't as present in these videos, unfortunately she's been feeling a bit under the weather, she's got a bad cold, and, and so she doesn't really feel like being on camera, so. You're stuck with me for most of this, these vlogs, it's, but uh, I'm sure she'll join us back on the camera soon. So we're gonna get ready for this, this tour and we'll talk to you later. Throughout this cruise, we found ourselves in Cove Cafe pretty much every morning. It became one of our favorite spots. The coffee was tasty, the staff was super friendly, and it just had a very relaxing vibe. on top of it that were very textured and that gave the three-dimensional effect. Waves, exactly right. It's not just waves, they have waves with them in Art Nouveau design. One of the biggest aspects of Art Nouveau is the peacock feather. And can you guess 
This place is also Art Nouveau themed as well. You can see the peacock feather design in the windows right here in the stained glass. Then you can also see it on the portholes behind us, which is really beautiful. What about the chandelier? Does anyone know what the chandelier is supposed to emulate? Pasta. Pasta, yes, spaghetti and meatballs to be exact, yes, spaghetti and meatballs. The design of the chandelier is uh, Chululi inspired, but it was actually made in Czechoslovakia. Fun fact. Uh, welcome to Ramina. Uh, while we're in here, I like to point out a very fancy bottle of wine or two. They're right over here. Yes, you already know. So this one is a 1947 Bordeaux. Um, this is the wine that Anton Ego ordered when he reviewed Gusteau's in the movie. and. Then this one, yeah, this one, I can't pronounce it, but it's from... Apuleto. Uh, Apparently. That's what they said in the film. Uh, can you say it again? Apuleto. <laughs> yeah, it's that. <laughs> <laughs> and from 1961, this is what, uh, when Chef Skinner was trying to get secrets out of Linguini, he got him a little tipsy. Mm -hmm. This is the wine that he used for that. Now, even crazier facts is this wine, the one I'm talking about now, is $15,000. <laughs> this wine is $25,000. It has just European scarlet. Okay. Yeah. It does have more though. It has like eight, and this one has five. Hello, welcome to Pink. This is our champagne uh, piano bar on board the Disney Dream. I really like this space. Um, you can see a lot of nods to champagne. You can see the champagne flutes are the light fixtures with a pearlescent kind of hue to them. Behind the bar. The champagne bottles are angled a certain way in order to have the lighting effect and the glass blown um, uh, lights to give the illusion of a bunch of popping champagne bubbles. And you'll see the mirror behind it to make it look like even more popping champagne bubbles. Uh, also, if you look into the wall, I'm trying to see if we can spot one. Let me see. In the different bubbles, oh, there's one. Did you see it? There's one. So every so often while you're sitting here enjoying your champagne, you look to the wall and you say, oh my gosh, I think I just saw a pink elephant on parade. No, it's not the champagne talking. It's an effect. Uh, are you ready for my joke? When you're inside pink, it's supposed to feel like you're in a popping pink champagne bubble. How romantic, how glamorous. Maybe this is the perfect place to pop the question. <laughs> All right, let's leave. Here we go. <laughs> um, welcome to the promenade deck. Uh, to promenade to me means to go for walk for leisurely pleasure or display. And in the golden age of ocean liners, that was a big thing. The first class passengers would promenade on the open deck to show off the latest fashions or um, maybe show off their latest new best friend on their arm. Um, so we have a promenade deck on our ships as well. Something out here ticks off all the aspects of the Art of the Theme Show Tour, and it is above us. It is our lifeboats. Yes, our lifeboats right above us. Um, when it comes to the classic look of our lifeboats, the bottom of the lifeboats have these ridged designs on the bottom. It's supposed to look like um, wood. So it's supposed to get that wooden effect right there, which is another reason why we have wooden benches, uh, wooden chairs, woman de wood, woman decorations, wooden decorations, <laughs> and of course the wood banisters and the teak wood below us as well. Hi, Dale. Hi. Oh, that's so cute. Hi, Chip and Dale. We're on a tour. Oh, hi. Hi. And that's Chip and Dale. Oh, hi. It's good to see you. It's nice to see you too, guys. Have fun. Oh, you gotta go back to cooking. Yes, exactly. We're gonna get some muffins. Oh, muffins. Okay. So jewelry that you see right there. I have some facts about the chandelier. Let me get it. There we go. Um, the diameter of the chandelier is 23 feet or 7 meters. Um, down it descends 13 feet 4 meters. Um, it's covered in 24 karat gold and Swarovski crystals. It's fancy. <laughs> Has anyone ever seen um, our chandeliers being cleaned before? It's really cool. So what they do is they, they stanchion off the entire carpeted area on deck three, and they have a system where they can lower the chandelier from the ceiling on wires. And I kid you not, the housekeeping team goes in with feather dusters. I don't know how long it takes, but they get the job done. It's fantastic. Which for me, and it's cheesy, but for me, I think about that maybe for you and your family in this moment in time, Maybe this is the happiest place on earth.
I don't know. I might be biased. Uh, but I'm going to stick around for as long as you like if you have any questions at all. But for now, go out, enjoy your day in this beautiful port of fall. My name is Samantha, and this was our Art of the Theme Show Tour. The only port adventure we booked for this cruise was the Lysa Fjord cruise through Disney. Thankfully, we are Silver Castaway Club level and Tori jumped on the booking the second it opened, so we were able to book our spots. This cruise took us from Mekjavik across the river and into Lysa Fjord. It wasn't exactly a tour boat, but they had makeshift seating set up for us around the boat. The tour was $130 per person. Given the time constraints and the bus shortages, we're happy that we booked through Disney rather than on our own. While the boat wasn't much to look at, the views were unbelievable. At one point along the way, we were treated to a little flyby from a small plane passing overhead. Shortly after we entered the fjord, we docked outside a restaurant where we were treated to coffee and traditional Norwegian waffles. They were served with whipped cream and strawberry preserves. They were so good, we both had seconds. There were also bathrooms and a small gift shop at the restaurant. Unfortunately, they were rushing us back on the boat, so we didn't get much of a chance to browse. From there, we headed to Pulpit Rock. It's a large flat area that juts out over the side of the cliff wall, resembling a pulpit. We've been told that the views from the top are some of the most beautiful in the world, but the hike up there is pretty tough. The next two stops were locations where they were meant to be waterfalls. Unfortunately for us, both seemed to have run dry by the time we arrived. We heard that people on the cruise earlier in the day saw them, so we're not sure why they were dry for us. Wrapping up on day six on the Disney Dream. Today we were in Stavanger, or uh, I guess more accurately, the Mekrivik something. It's the industrial port near Stavanger. We couldn't actually pull into Stavanger. Um, but yeah, so we had a pretty fun morning doing the ship tour and stuff like that. 
and then we uh, after after uh, we didn't eat lunch actually we had a late breakfast at Cabana's and then we went uh, on our the the one excursion we had booked on this trip which was the um, Lysa Fjord uh, tour so it was a three and a half hour tour on a boat that took us um, from this port actually they, they changed it it was supposed to come out of Stavanger we were supposed to bus over there but there was a whole lot of issues with the buses and the drama today um, yeah it got a bit messy people were pretty upset about the the port and just the lack of buses and, and issues there but anyways we 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 actually did take a bus. We took a bus from one side of this port area through like the recycling center over to another dock where the boat was. And we got on there and uh, it was, I don't know, 45, 50 minutes to get up to the fjord. And we, uh, as soon as we got in, we stopped at this little place and had some pancakes, the Norwegian pancakes, which were really, really good actually. Um, they had, uh, like a really kind of a thick whipped cream and then some like strawberry or lingonberry sauce something like that but it was really really good uh, we didn't get to stay there long though they pretty much after about 15 20 minutes they they rushed us back on the boat and we drove uh, further into the fjord where we saw pulpit rock and where the waterfalls i guess where they were there this morning the people on the earlier cruise saw them but for us there wasn't really waterfalls so i'm not sure i guess changing of tides or something, I don't know, but we, we had no waterfalls. We had the spots for them, but no waterfalls. But uh, anyways, it was absolutely gorgeous. We had, it was a beautiful, beautiful sail. There are lots of issues I could point out, like the boat was like a working boat. It wasn't actually a tour boat. They had plastic deck, plastic deck chairs on top for us to sit on, stuff like that. It was a bit strange. And for $130 uh, per person, it was pretty expensive. But, uh, I mean, the views, the weather was beautiful, the views were beautiful. It was like, it was absolutely breathtaking. So it was, you can overlook the rest of that stuff just to, you know, the views. Amazing. Uh, we got back just a little bit before dinner and we went to the Pink uh, Champagne Bar, Champagne Lounge. Uh, it had been recommended to us to try out these Champagne Pops. Which it turns out they were just like frozen fruit bars that they put in a glass of champagne. Really tasty, really nice. A bit pricey at 18 bucks a person, but uh, or per glass. But yeah, they were they were really good though. And we managed to snag a couple of the 25th anniversary of the nice coasters they don't usually give out. The bartender was really nice and let us take a couple with us, so that was nice. Um, we had dinner at Royal Palace. It was actually one of the better meals we've had so far on this trip, um, outside of Remy's. It's the definitely the best entree I've had of all the places we went to. I had the um, Parmesan encrusted chicken with the fettuccine. Really, really nice. Um, yeah. So after dinner, we were going to go to a trivia, but the lounge was just way too packed. We're like, we're not going to do this. So we just said we went and, and uh, sat in one of the hot tubs in the adult area and just watched the sunset. It was very relaxing. And while we were there, we might have booked another Disney cruise. <laughs> Next August we're gonna we're gonna take the dream again out of Southampton. It's a shorter cruise. It's a four night cruise um, down to uh, Spain. I forget the name of the port. Essentially, it's your um, embarkation day, a sea day, Spain, and a sea day back, and then you disembark. So a little bit shorter cruise, but it'd be really nice. It's nice knowing that we're gonna get back on this cruise on the ship again next year. Um, yeah, so. Now we're just going to have a nice relaxing evening, and uh, tomorrow is a sea day. It's our last day on the ship. Very sad. This week has flown by. Um, it's been an amazing week, and I'm so happy we got to do it. But uh, yeah, so tomorrow's our last day. We have a beer tasting scheduled in the morning, and uh, well, in the morning, around 11. But that's I think that's about it, all that we have scheduled. Um, we have dinner and a palette in the evening and I'm excited for this one because this is the one where you get to like draw your character on the paper and then they animate it on the screens and stuff in the room so really excited for that um, but not really excited that's our last day because it means it's almost over uh, yeah so anyway we're gonna relax for a bit more before going to bed might try to finish we started watching Muppets Treasure Island earlier I think I'm gonna try to finish that tonight 
and uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Join us next time for A Day at Sea, where we experience spooky fog, tasty beers, and a lot more fun on board during our last day on the Disney Dream.